Many business owners first build their website and then go back to fill internet marketing needs. Although this may save money in the short term, it's going to cost the company substantially in the long run. Creating a well-reasoned keyword strategy is the most important SEO task you can perform to meet both the needs of spiders and your potential audience, which we talked about earlier in the series. Now it's time to apply that knowledge. An SEO blueprint takes your keyword research and organizes it for your web development team. An SEO blueprint could be compared to a business plan or more specifically an internet marketing plan where it's really a strategic, well thought out uh, plan that can help you achieve your internet marketing goals. Next I'm going to be going over three ways in specific that an SEO blueprint can help your uh, search engine friendly web development. So what is an SEO blueprint? Well, Justin as an architect would hand off a completed blueprint to a construction company to build. Uh, an SEO blueprint is given to a programming team um, from an internet marketer to, to, to execute. Uh, the programming team carefully reviews the SEO bl blueprint to ensure they are building the client's website correctly so it's search engine friendly. Um, and these are the three main areas that really are usually included in an SEO blueprint and that is one, website infrastructure, two, internal linking structure, and three, on-page optimization. The first I'll go over is website infrastructure. Another way to say a website is search engine friendly is to just say a website does not prevent search engines from crawling or indexing web pages. And all of this begins with the infrastructure. Um, if you're building a dynamic website like an e-commerce site or social networking site, this process is even, even more critical. Um, and I've listed seven common areas to avoid uh, when building a website. Some of these are common, some of these may be new. Uh, one would be Flash and JavaScript navigation. Definitely avoid that. Uh, avoid poor usability and accessibility, um, especially from a user standpoint. Uh, avoid URL parameters, uh, duplicate content, um, content that can't be read by spiders, um, not coding the standards, and also just broken hyperlinks. Those are just seven tips. There's a lot that goes into infrastructure, but those are some common mistakes that we, we see a lot. Next is internal linking structure. Uh, to, to rank well in search engines, your website needs to be organized correctly. Uh, an SEO architect uses an SEO blueprint to, to clearly explain to the programmers how, how sections, categories, and pages need to be strategically organized. Um, this strategy is based on the initial keyword discovery that we went over earlier. So by mapping out to the internal linking of a website, it really helps uh, to create a user-friendly navigational structure. Um, outlined here is what I call a, a top-down keyword approach, uh, where your top keyword is optimized first, usually on your home page, and then that same keyword broadens out uh, within your sections, your categories, and eventually each individual web page themselves. So for example, uh, I'm promoting a website called Wholesale Keychain. Uh, we are attempting to become number one for the word keychains in Google. Uh, in order to get the most link juice internally from the domain name, we have optimized the home page for keychains, and then each section for a keychain related term, each category for a keychain related term, and each product page for a keyword uh, related term. Uh, and then so since all the web pages relate to one another and all the pages link to each other in this top down approach the domain name passes the link juice from the home page to the sections to the categories and then eventually down to each individual page if you want to break down search engine optimization or seo it really comes down to to content and links um, and especially on-page optimization is something that you can control it's something that's on your website that, that you can change around and you have a, a direct effect on it. Um, so we're going to get into on-page optimization next. We're going to discuss really what it is, what needs to be completed, and really the main factors that need to be analyzed or changed uh, because a lot has changed or, over the years. As you may have guessed, on-page optimization are the factors that you can modify on your website to make it search engine friendly. Uh, there's a lot of information uh, out there on on-page optimization factors. I'm just going to review five of them. Uh, one, page titles. Page titles are valued greatly by the search engines and, and they also appear in search results, so they are very important. The best advice I can give you is one, write a page title that explains what the page is actually about, and, and two, insert the keyword phrase you are trying to optimize for first. 
Uh, it is okay to add keywords to your page titles. Uh, in this example, it would be okay to add, uh, you know, Ford keychains and key rings uh, since they both describe uh, the same thing. Uh, but just keep in mind uh, that Google only publishes 62 characters, uh, and then also users read your page titles before they click on your listings. Uh, so, so keep it simple, keep it to the point, and I would spend more time building links to that page than try to tweak, you know, your page title uh, to see how it affects your results. Uh, secondly, search engine friendly URLs or SEF URLs. Uh, search engines don't like extra URL parameters. Uh, they also don't like seeing extremely long URLs. Uh, so, so keep your URL simple. Um, add your keywords or part of your keyword phrases uh, you are optimizing for uh, if possible. Uh, uh, next, breadcrumbs. Um, no doubt everyone's heard the story of Hansel and Gretel, right? They, they left breadcrumbs on the trails uh, to find their way home. Well, well search engines, uh, they like finding their way back to important pages, and users like finding their way back to important pages. So if you have 50 products linking back to a category page, chances are Google's going to see that. They're going to say, this category page must be important. 50 pages are linking back to it. Um, and when you're doing that, and look at this example, make sure you're... Um, you're using keywords that you're optimizing for in those breadcrumbs because internal links they, they count just the same as external links um, depending on the page value um, or the link juice of that page um, next internal links uh, also very similar to breadcrumbs uh, most people know not to use the keywords um, or most people know to, to use the keywords they're optimizing for um, when they're linking right you don't want to link the word click here because the click here is going to get value. That anchor text is important. Um, but sometimes people forget this rule when they're when they're linking menus, categories, and especially product pages. Um, in this example, you'll notice that we're optimizing for Ford Keychain. So that is why we we listed the the word Ford Keychain first. So you'll want to follow that uh, follow that same format. Uh, finally, header tags or H1 tags. Really, it's standard practice these days to have your header tag be the same as your page title. You don't need to do this, but but I would recommend it. Listed here are other on-page optimization factors. Although we went over five, many on-page optimization factors uh, affect your search engine rankings. We're just going to go over a few more. Uh, robot text files. Every website needs a robot text file set up. This tells search engines what pages, what folders uh, they, they can index and, and crawl, and what, what folders and pages that they cannot. So that's something that you should get set up. Anchor text, we went over this a little bit with the click here um, example. Look up anchor text. Google's highly values anchor text. Um, Google Analytics and, and conversion tracking. Not only do you want to drive all this traffic, but you want to know what t traffic is converting uh, into leads and sales. Uh, Google uh, conversion tracking will help this. Uh, the Google's uh, goal tracking software will help this. So make sure you get that installed because if you're going after 100 keywords, you want to know, you know what 20 are the best performing and then so you can focus your efforts on those so you can really be most, more cost effective in your marketing efforts. Uh, Google Webmaster Tools, um, you're going to want to get this set up. Google recommends you do this, so, so, so you should do it. Um, but it also provides you valuable information like uh, what, what pages are um, Google can't index uh, or hyperlinks that are broken. Um, and then finally, go over blog setup. Um, back in the day, if you didn't have a website, um, you're behind the times. Now, if you don't have a blog and you're not posting regular in that blog, and, and those blog posts aren't linking back to your, your internal pages that sell, um, you're behind the times and your competitors are no doubt doing that. So these are other on-page optimization factors to consider. There's a lot of information out there um, in the search engines. I recommend you look up each one and, and find out how you can implement that into your site.